So hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to introduce or to, to share with you some uh, outcomes of a field study that was conducted within the Fit Hydro project. It was so we were concerned with monitoring bed load diversion through a vortex tube, and I'm going to explain you what the vortex tube is in a second. So where are we? Um, again, as yesterday, sorry, um, at the hydropower plant Schiffmühle in Switzerland. So it's at the Limmat River, and you can see the catchment that drains at the hydropower plant here. Um, as Armin has mentioned yesterday, the Limmat River is impacted by a chain of hydropower plants along its course, and one of them is hydropower power plant Schiffmühle, which you can see here. Here uh, in the upper part, you have the headwater channel, and here you have the residual flow reach. We have a main powerhouse here in green, and in blue, a residual flow hydropower plant that Armin talked about yesterday. We have a 400 meter long sideware that is overflown when the discharge is really high. And in the middle here is the vortex tube. The vortex tube was um, constructed in two, 2003. And the aim was to divert bed load from that is entrained into the headwater channel to the residual flow reach. So how does the vortex tube work? Here you can see a sketch with the headwater channel, the sideware, and the residual flow reach on the left. The vortex tube is basically just a steel tube that has an opening at the top and sometimes here also. Um, and then we have a gate valve that inside we are here that is opened when this discharge surpasses a certain threshold discharge. When the gate is opened, um, you have a spiral flow that develops within the vortex tube and due to the, it develops due to the pressure difference between the two channels and also due to the approach flow. And bed load particles that are entrained into the vortex tube are then flushed to the residual flow reach. Now here is the, vort the vortex tube at Schiffmühle in operation. Um, at our laboratory, we have conducted some lab studies on the diversion efficiency of bed load um, of vortex tubes. And we have, the, the results have shown that, that diversion efficiency in the lab can be up to 80 or 90%. But it's still a bit unclear if this diversion efficiency is also so high in the field. And the idea was now to somehow monitor the diversion of bed load through the vortex tube in the field at uh, hydropower plant, plant Schiffmühle. What we did is we installed passive acoustic sensors right uh, directly on the vortex tube. So the, prince, the, the idea is that the entire vortex tube, which is a steel tube, acts as an impact body and grains that are transported through the tube hit the um, and, and hit the tube, they cause a vibration and this vibration can be picked up by sensors that are installed on the vortex tube. Here we installed a geophone, accelerometer and microphone, which are sensors that have previously been used in different setups for bed load monitoring. There's a, a bunch of studies that have tried to monitor bed load continuous, um, continuously in rivers and also at uh, hydraulic structures. We have installed three sensors because in the beginning we weren't sure how the signal is going to look like at all and if it's going to work at all. Um, but it turned out that actually the geophone was all, was able to pick up the signal um, pretty well and was in the end, let's say, the most robust sensor for the setup that we had here. So we focused the further data analysis on the geophone data. Uh, what we know from other bed load monitoring studies with these passive acoustic sensors is that you need, you currently still need field calibration to operate them. So you need to relate the geophone signal that you get to the characteristics of the um, of your um, of your bed load. And here we want to relate it to the transport transported bed load volume and mass, and also to the transported grain sizes. So we were lucky that the, uh, in 2018, the operator of the hydropower plant excavated gravel from the headwater channel that you can see here, and we could make use of this excavator on a float. Um, we performed our field calibration by opening and closing the vortex tubes uh, six times. And in five out of these six times, we dumped uh, sediment just in front of the vortex tube before opening it. So we had the entrainment of a, of a known sediment sample. We had um, four different sediment mixtures that we used, and we used volumes of half to two cubic meters. 
And now uh, the question is, what do we actually get out of this geophone signal and how can we relate it to the transported volume and the transported grain sizes? And here you can see just the sample signal of such a grain impact on onto the vortex tube. You usually define some kind of threshold um, due to noise and other um, signal noise and other parameters. And what you can do then is, for example, count all the impacts or the impulses above this threshold here in yellow. And you can also define or um, uh, um, read the maximum amplitude that occurred in some during some time period. And from other uh, studies on bed load monitoring, we knew that there are two main relations. Namely that the transported volume or mass is a function of the number of impulses that you count and the transported grain sizes is a number of the amplitude and frequency of the signal. And now in this presentation, I can't show you everything, but I'm gonna focus on this relation between grain sizes and the amplitude. We look at our calibration signals. We um, can extract the maximum amplitude and relate that to the maximum diameter because we knew the grain sizes that we were using. And we, we have the, our five calibration samples here as black triangles. We also compared them to other data points um, coming from other geophone setups. So they used completely different setups. Um, I think all of them with the Swiss plate geophone system that you, um, that you might know. But we actually, it, so the, the data actually resulted in a very similar relation between the maximum amplitude and the maximum diameter here. Now we can apply this relation onto uh, the, our monitoring data. Here you can see the year 2018 and 2019. In black is the discharge, and in the two gray, gray lines um, signify the threshold discharges for opening and closing the vortex tube. And then in gray, you have events where the vortex tube was actually opened. Unfortunately, here in summer 2019, we had quite a lot of long flood events and we had some sensor damage. So that's why the uh, rest of the year 2019 is, um, is not shown here. Uh, just as, a, as an info, we have another or a new uh, geophone installed now at the Vortex 2. But from the data we got, we can extract, I can, or I can show you two example flood events. A, in blue, you have the discharge again. This is a quite short flood event and has a low peak discharge. And in contrast, we have a longer multiple day flood event, which has a peak discharge of about 300 cubic meters per second, which corresponds roughly to a one year flood. And in gray and black, you can now see for 10 minute intervals, we extracted the average and the 95th percentile of the maximum diameter. So you basically see the transported diameters um, based on our relation between amplitude and diameter. You can also say, see that we have a threshold diameter. So below about 20 millimeters, we cannot pick up the signal because, it's, um, because there's also signal noise. So this is our threshold diameter. And then we have, for example, in this long flood event, we can see that we have quite a lot of sediment transport activity that we record for at the beginning during these um, high flows. And we also, and, and so that quiets down a little bit, but we still have transport for the entire event basically. And if we compare the range where the discharge is similar to the one to the lower and uh, shorter flood event, we can also see that the recorded rain size diameters um, roughly correspond between these two events. We can further validate or we can combine these, um, this data of, we can combine it data of all flood events and relate the maximum diameters that we record with the geophone sensor to the discharge. We can see that we stay um, for, for a long, for a quite um, a big discharge range, we stay in, in the small diameter range also, and then it starts to pick up and also larger grain sizes seem to be transported for higher dis discharges. Would of course be interesting to know how this curve um, or this, this data cloud looks like for higher discharges, but we don't have the data for that yet. We can validate this relation a bit with other data sources. So we, for example, have a, a hydrodynamic 3D numerical model that was set up by AFRI, one of the indus, industry partners that um, shows or simulates the hydrodynamic conditions 
uh, at hydropower plant Schiffmühle. And if we analyze the hydraulic conditions, they suggest that grains of up to 50 millimeters can be transported in the headwater channel for high flows, which fits um, our results reasonably well. Reasonably well. And also compare this to actual um, grain size distribution measurements that we did um, on the material that was excavated from the headwater channel, which are the orange curves. So you can see that most of the sediment, let's say, is between 20 and 60 or 80 millimeters um, of diameter. So this also corresponds quite well to the data we got here and um, validates that these kinds of grain sizes can be transported actually up to the turbine inlet. This is, his, this is a picture from the turbine inlet and the sediment that's, that's deposited there. Now, just a quick note uh, before I summarize on the volumes, we also tried to um, calculate transported volumes up from our data. This is a bit more difficult also due to the low, um, low sample count of our field calibration. There, we, if we calculate our calibration volumes, we get errors of plus minus 100% still. So this is not entirely satisfactory, but we also have to say that, um, that our field um, calibration sample was just limited. So to quickly summarize, I've shown you that the vortex tube is a bed load diversion measure that is applied here at hydropower plant Schiffmühle, but could also be applied maybe at other hydropower plants that are of the same type. We have shown in principle that passive acoustic bed load monitoring can be applied to a structure such as the vortex tube. And I want to stress here that probably not only vortex tubes can work, but also other steel structures or somehow where, where bed load is, um, causes an impact and a vibration signal. The grain size detection is quite satis satisfactory. So we can, um, we can really detect the grain sizes that are transported up to the vortex tube and through the vortex tube. However, the volume monitoring still has some, uh, some uncertainties that would require a more thorough field calibration. And so my last point is that it's very important to think about the field calibration setup and also how much data can be collected there. And with that, that's all. And thank you very much for your interest.